The key to doing well in your 2020 fantasy football draft is to identify those late round sleepers and those early round busts. We're going to give you our four favorite sleepers and four favorite busts coming up next. Hello, everyone. I'm Eric Lee. And I'm Michael Kurtzman, and we are the Fantasy Football Consultants. Oh, this is so great. It is awesome to welcome Michael Kurtzman as our newest Fantasy Football Consultant. Welcome, Michael. Yeah, th- thank you, Eric. It's, 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 it's an honor. So let's, let's, uh, let's get a, let me ask you a few questions so our viewers get to know you a little bit. Tell us a little bit about your fantasy football uh, experience. Well, I've been playing fantasy football for five years, and I'm heading into my sixth year doing this. Uh, and just last year, actually, I won my league where I beat out um, uh, my dad and Eric. Oh, thanks for uh, those throwing of you that. Don't know my dad is Gary Kurtzman. <laughs> yeah, well, I begrudgingly say. Congratulations. <laughs> Tell people a little bit about why uh, you pulled that out. Who are some of your key players? Uh, well, it all kind of started with like, again, just like the con- context of this video, my sleepers and busts. I was, I was able to get Jameis Winston late. He's a fantastic fan, or he was a fantastic fantasy quarterback <laughs> when he was Tampa Bay starter. Now they have Brady, of course. Yeah. Uh, I had uh, Mahomes, Winston, and I also, yeah, we did a two quarterback league. Yeah, I, that's what oh, made that so valuable, those two in a. In a yeah, in a, I had Mahomes, Winston, and I had uh, Fournette. And then at the end of the year, I picked up Kenyon Drake, and he absolutely went bonkers for me. Yeah, he was huge was, down the, down the, the stretch. Yeah. Well, what about real football, Michael? Who, who's your favorite NFL team? Go Niners. Yeah. Niners all the way. For the, the viewers out there, they're the first time they're seeing you, but you've been involved in the channel for really since its inception. You want to tell a little bit of people what you've been doing uh, behind the scenes? Uh, yeah. Thank you for pointing that out. Yes. So I've been, ever since the birth of this channel, I've been in the background scenes doing various tasks for uh, Eric and my dad. And I have, this is my first time on air, but I've been, you know, in the background scenes doing spreadsheets collecting all the data and just doing anything that i really had to you know to be a part of this channel so i think I you guys like to think of the channel as eric and uh, my dad but it was the triplets behind it there you go and my i think my mistake in the last league was we let you get too close to our projection data and our model and you use that against us what <laughs> well you, let's you, turn our i'm sorry how could you say that? Yeah, <laughs> let's turn our attention to the 2020 fantasy football season. Michael, let's get into, we want to pick four of our favorite sleepers. As the new guy in front of the camera, I'll let you start it off. Who is your number one sleeper for this upcoming draft? All right, thank you, Eric. Well, my number one sleeper is David Johnson, and he has an ADP of 53, running back 23. Do you guys remember the David Johnson mania way back in 2016 where he absolutely balled out at the end of the year and then the next year he did really well? Well, he hasn't done so well. He's been injured every year. (laughs) And now with DeAndre Hopkins gone, there's 150 targets that have to go somewhere. Watson has a terrible offensive line. So a lot of those are going to have to go to David Johnson, the running back. Since his ADP is 53, you can draft him at – the end of the fourth, start of the fifth, that allowing you to stop, allowing you to say draft receivers, another running back, and maybe any other position. And from where you're getting him, the value is ginormous. 100% agree with you, Michael. ADP of 53 for David Johnson is absolutely ridiculous. I tell you, I don't get no respect. No respect at all. Oh, what? <laughs> Uh, everything you said, I just want to point out the fact that some people think that, well, yeah, I know he was good a long time ago, but what about recently? Well, he was doing great last year before he got hurt. Six games in, averaged a total of 103 yards, uh, five TDs total in six games. He was, he was on his way. 
And if you look at the other backs that are, are being drafted around this, it's just absurd. So yeah. 100% on board. Yeah, and he also has fresh legs since he's been injured so much. Yeah. He doesn't have as much wear and tear as... I'm going to go with Chris Carson, ADP 34, and running back 16. So over the last two years, it, it, it's absolutely unbelievable how committed the Seahawks are to running. They have run the ball more than every other team other than those darn Ravens. So the pie is huge. And guess what, folks? You've got the running back who's going to be the lead back. He will get at least 75% of the carries. He will be the goal line back, and he will get involved a little bit in the passing game. And for this, he gets 16th best running back on, the, on one of the top rushing teams in the NFL. And what I, might I add, Michael, a very good Seattle Seahawks team. So oh, you guys lost in the divisional round. We yeah, but this is not a team that's going to be behind a lot. So No, um, they're definitely going to be in front with their power rushing game. Yeah. You, what concerns do you have about this pick, or do you love it? My concerns about Carson are two major things that he's had all throughout his career. He is a little injury prone. He's gotten injured at least once or twice every single year, including last year where he – I forget what he did, but it was bad. And he got sidelined for so long. He also has fumble problems. Like halfway through the year, they benched him because he had fumble problems. Okay. Uh, just on behalf of every Seattle Seahawks fan? I'll shut the hell up. No, you're right. You're right. But yeah, I got a solution for you for both of those issues. Basically, at the end of your draft, he's at ADP 210. You can pick up Carlos Hyde as a backup. Just in case he gets injured because you do make a point, he has gotten injured, or are you worried that he gets benched, you have that security. But here's the thing to know. Rashard Penny is not going to be a factor. There's well, no way Carson is going to lose his job. And yeah, he's injured still. Yeah, he, 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 he uh, tore his ACL late in, in the year. He, he, yeah. he's, he's not going to be effective. So, um, all right, well, very good. Uh, so we've got, uh, our, I've got Chris Carson on my list. You've got David Johnson. What's your next pick? Well, my next pick might be a little controversial, but I say Josh Allen, from where you can get Josh Allen at ADP 67, is just a steal. In leagues where you have 25 passing yards per point, running quarterbacks are just so valuable. And that's what Josh Allen is. He's a multi-threat quarterback that can throw touchdowns and, th and run for a lot of yards and touchdowns. The only problem is, is, is accuracy, though in fantasy football, that's not as much of a factor as in real life. When I think about the guys that are around him, is he as good, Michael? Do you have confidence that he's going to continue to develop? I know he's still relatively young and be able to hit those open receivers. You talked about it, about his accuracy. Yeah. I, yeah, I do have some concerns about his accuracy, but every year he's been in the league, he's gotten a little bit by bit better and from where you can get him his rushing ability just totally steals the show like last season he had nine rushing touchdowns in over 500 rushing yards as a quarterback for a quarterback that as like Josh Allen and from where you can get him that's just by far and away he might be the best quarterback not the best quarterback but like the best quarterback from where you can draft him with his ADP of 67. And the good news is his team is on the rise. It really is. The uh, Las Vegas, for the first time in I don't know how long, I mean a long time, the New England Patriots are not favored to win the AFC East. It's the Buffalo Bills. So yeah. if the Bills are scoring, you know that Allen will be a part of it. So my number two sleeper pick, ADP, 82 for Julian Elliman. Inconceivable! I can't believe it. I just don't believe it. This is absurd. Folks, Julian Edelman last year, among all wide receivers, fourth in targets, fourth in receptions. He had over 1,100 yards. And for that, he's a wide receiver 34. I know he's 34 years old, but that doesn't mean to be, he has to be a wide receiver 34 
You can get them at ADP 82. This just doesn't make any sense to me, Michael. It's not like the New England Patriots brought in a big name wide receiver. He's still going to be their number one uh, wide receiver. Well, that remains to be seen, though I do have a couple other points that I'll touch up on. For one, who the heck is going to be the starting quarterback? I think it's going to be Cam, Cam Newton. Newton. Cam, Cam Newton. Newton literally his accuracy. I mean, I get it when you're throwing short to, you know, the Ed, routes that Edelman runs. You don't need that much accuracy. But Cam Newton has never been accurate. He's like the modern-day Michael Vick. He's got wheels and a cannon. So what is it? You, you, not a, not a, where's it, the consistency? Not a, <laughs> where's the consistency, Michael? You just talked about Josh Allen. You're okay to overlook his his inaccuracy because it's fantasy football. But yeah. Cam Newton, you have a problem with? Well, because of his supporting cast. Look who he has around his supporting cast. Okay. No, no real big names there. And right, what another thing, we're not sure if Edelman's going to get the number one role or Nikhil Harry will. That still remains to be seen by Bill Belichick. He has not confirmed anything. Okay, who was it last year? It was Edelman, but who they was had the year Brady before, left. Who was the year before that? Nikhil and the year before wasn't that. in the league. And the year before that? <laughs> no, you have to go, okay, Gronk was technically <laughs> the lead receiver before that. So, you know, it's, it's okay. okay. But look, I mean, that was back when they had Brady. Now they have Newton. The Fair enough. Fair enough. Massive. All right. We, we it was it was going so well, Michael. We were agreeing, and, and then it fell apart. All Sorry. Right. In review, we've got uh, Chris Carson and Julian Element as my sleepers, and Michael. And I've got Josh Allen and David Johnson. All right. So we want to take a moment, and if you made it this far of the video, please help us out and smash that like button. And if you aren't yet please hit the red subscriber button followed by the bell icon. That way you'll be notified of our future videos. And we have a lot of videos coming off in the preseason. And also do not forget to comment down below who your sleepers in bus, bus are because we are dying to know. Let's switch gears, Michael, and talk about bus. And when we use the word bus, we don't mean it literally that the guy is going to be awful, but we see that he's going earlier than we think he should. So he's a little yeah. overvalued. How and about bus, like we, well, the way I usually think of bus is someone like, say you're drafting someone in the first and second round, those rounds, you need high floor. Someone that you know is going to do well and bus in there. If you draft someone there that has high ceiling, low floor, and it doesn't pan out that you just wasted a very valuable draft pick. So to me, bus had all bus, the word bust has always meant uh, players that I, like you said, that I think are going way too early or players that I just don't think are going to pan out at all. Yep. It's a good point. Just in general, what Michael said, I hope everybody caught it. In your draft, early round, you're going for high floors. Later round, you're going for Those high floors. High ceilings. They're over My number one bust is Mike Evans. Mike Evans' ADP is 26. But when you look at it, I know everyone's saying, oh, wow, Mike Evans is going to be the clear number one receiver. No, he's not. He is not the number one receiver. I mean, but look at all the competition he has around him. He's got an aging Brady who showed serious signs of regression last year. He can't throw deep. He threw deep like four times all year. <laughs> but those are Mike Evans' routes. We just effectively took away Mike Evans. And I'm pretty sure Godwin's going to be the lead number one receiver with his underneath routes. He's basically like the Tampa Bay's Julian Edelman. It's going to be Godwin and Perriman. And then another thing is the tight end situation. Gronkowski takes away from all of Mike Evans' specialties. He's a big six foot four frame. And Gronk does the same things that he does. The thing that made Mike Evans super valuable was his touchdowns that he got. Well, Gronk and Brady have had that connection since 2010, so I don't see why anything would change. And so I just think staying away from Mike Evans in the first couple rounds is a really good move. Yeah, so I'm on board, Michael. I like this pick. Here's the thing that I've seen some uh, people say, and they're just 100% wrong. They say, well, we think Mike Evans will do better because now we have uh, Tom Brady, who's a better quarterback, than uh, Jameis Winston. That's ridiculous. Oh, that's Absolutely absurd. Utter, utter. 
absurdness. Jameis Winston is an outstanding fantasy football quarterback. He makes a lot of mistakes. He put himself in a situation where uh, he had to throw a lot, and that increased the pie of passing yards. Yeah. Trust me, the Bucs are going to have a lot less passing yards under Brady than they did under Winston. And I frankly just think that the Bucs are going to turn into last year's Browns. They still have their big weakness of their secondary. They have the best front, they have the best front seven in football, followed by the Niners, but then they have the worst secondary in football. My guy who's just going way too early, let me give you a hint. <laughs> At ADP 30 and wide receiver 11, Amari Cooper. Can you? Hey, I have him on my fantasy team. Right? Yeah, well, I hope you didn't pick him in the first 30 picks because he's, he's no. in your early rounds, Michael said it. You want a guy with a high floor. You also would like a guy with some amount of consistency. That's the opposite of Amari Cooper. He is a couple of huge games, which is great for that week but he's going to kill you in a lot of other games. Just last year, Michael, four games. The guy had three or fewer catches, four games, 24 or fewer yards. Absolutely destroying you as supposedly uh, a top wide receiver. Now, the other thing, Michael, is his competition. He's got a ton of competition led by Michael Gallup. I want to tell you something. Who is their number one wide receiver? Everyone says it's Amari Cooper. Everyone is drafting him as if it's Amari Cooper. He's going 43 picks ahead of Michael Gallup. But guess what? Who had more total yards and who had more targets? Two key factors. It was close, but it was Michael Gallup's last year. So um, just completely overvalued. I think Gallup is only going to get better as he gets more and more experience. And CeeDee Lamb. This is... yeah. CeeDee Lamb is not a factor, though. He's a rookie wide receiver, and we're not even sure how good he really is. And I just – I never trust a rookie receiver to really do anything. There are a couple rare exceptions, but it's usually that receivers take three years to really take full flight form. But I really do think that the main competition here is Amari Cooper and Michael Gallup. But I think Amari Cooper will be the number one receiver and will be Dak's favorite. And Dak Prescott's about to lead the best offense in football. And so the, the fact that you can have – I'm going to disagree with you on this. The fact that you can have Amari Cooper, who's about to be the number one receiver on the best offense in football, I, I, that's massive. Okay. That's, so, why make, that's what makes Zeke so valuable too. Yeah, so my only comment back is I don't know if he will be the number one wide receiver. And – Although, I'm not so sure they're the number one offense, but they certainly aren't the number one passing offense. And uh, I think Zeke Elliott is going to be the beneficiary heavily under the new coach, uh, Mike McCarthy. Well, Mike McCarthy never really ran the ball. He was a passing guy. He still is a passing guy. And so I think the passing game will get a lot better with Dak's hopeful improvement. I say hopeful because it's okay. Dak Prescott, guys. I mean, but Prescott had a great year last year. I just think that, that was, that's, that's his ceiling. Let's see. Let's see. But, again, I am not saying that Amari Cooper will, is horrible. I'm saying he shouldn't be picked in the top 30, and that's where he's going. Yeah. How about you? Well, my second one is Derrick Henry with an ADP of six. He's an interesting subject. On one hand, he could do really well. On another hand, he could do terrible. Let's look at his entire career for a second. He's been mediocre. Aside from a contract year this past season where he absolutely balled out, he sucked every other year. And I just, you cannot have that within ADP6. You need consistency. And frankly, the tight, like, I just don't trust Derrick Henry's ability to, you know, be the guy. From where you get him at ADP 6, he just, it just, he doesn't even get involved in the passing game, too. It's like, you could get Kamara over him, who would be much better, who's on a much better offense and a much better team. Well, to break it down, look, he's going ADP 6, which means he's going after the three big uh, running backs and the two Saints. So most people are picking Kamara earlier than yeah. that. And look, 
Uh, I'm halfway with you, Michael. Um, I want to acknowledge, though, the guy truly was a beast last year. And I don't think it was a fluke. I mean, he led the NFL in rushing yards and rushing touchdowns. So, and that's what people are thinking. But you hit on the big issue with him. He doesn't get involved in the passing game. And not just by a little bit. All the guys that are being drafted around him, running backs in the first round, light years more involved in the passing game. Dalvin, yeah. uh, Dalvin Cook and uh, Zeke Elliott, about three and a half receptions uh, a game. Saquon Barkley, four. Um, Kamara, six. And McCaffrey, seven receptions a game. What do we get from Henry? 1.2. Just a reception a game. Um, so that severely limits his, his upside. Yeah. Again, uh, I just think that the, what I like about Henry is he is the goal line back. He's going to get almost all of the carries on a very good Tennessee Titans team that I think will be ahead. And I think the guy just gets stronger as the game goes on. So I do agree that ADP six is a little high for him, but I won't go that much lower. Yeah, well, I like I would like Nick Chubb better, honestly. If you look at last year in the final game, Nick Chubb was up by like 200 yards, but then Derrick Henry rattled off like 230 a game. Aren't you concerned about Nick Chubb's goal line presence? The guy just gets stuffed time and time again. No, I'm not goal. concerned about his goal line presence. Nick Chubb is Nick Chubb is the number one running back, and Kareem Hunt has zero factor. What? Like he won't have any factor. He had zero factor last year in the eating into Chubb's running game. But remember, he was out all last year he, before, you know, being suspended. And he comes in not knowing the, the, you know, the playbook and things. Now he had a whole offseason to, to get ready. You don't think that uh, Kareem Hunt will eat into not just the passing yardage, but the rushing of uh, no. Nick Chubb? No, I, Nick Chubb, I think, is the clear number one running back on that team because Kareem Hunt, I just don't think has it anymore. Okay. I'm not saying Kareem Hunt is going to take over as the number one back of Cleveland. What I'm saying is look at Derrick Henry. He's got no competition whatsoever. Nick Chubb will get some competition from Kareem Hunt more than he did last year. Maybe, but Kareem, but at least Nick Chubb also does participate in the passing game. So. Yes. Yeah, you, very valid. More, more so than uh, than Henry. Every, everyone, even Josh. yeah, Derrick Henry Josh is like the Jacobs. water. Josh Jacobs gets more receptions uh, than Derrick Henry, and I don't even understand why. Because just get him a little bit out in space for a little screen, and the guy can just rumble down, roll, bowl over people. But that's just not how they use him. All right, my number two bust uh, at an ADP uh, forty-five. Running back 21 is Mark Ingram. Oh, my goodness. So I already told you before that the Ravens run more than anyone else, but that is so heavily due. I mean, they rushed a ridiculous 206 yards, 21 uh, TDs, but over half of that uh, was Lamar Jackson. <laughs> uh, yeah. so, um, so here's the deal. It isn't just Lamar Jackson. Even if you remove Lamar Jackson off, he's got a ton of uh, – it's basically going to be – they're already announced. It's basically going to be running back uh, by committee down there. They drafted J.K. Dobbins yeah. in like the second round, and I personally would rather have Dobbins than Ingram. <laughs> I think Dobbins might actually have a shot to be the number one running back on that team. Well, maybe by the end of the year. It'll, it'll take some, some time. But here's the bottom line. Here's where to crystallize it, and I'm – I, am, I know you're going to agree with this. His ADP at 45 is, five, is eight spots earlier than your, um, your sleeper pick, David Johnson. If you are in your draft and you have to pick between Mark Ingram and David Johnson, and you pick Mark Ingram, either two things. Either you are an insane person or you are Mark Ingram's mom. One of the two. And no offense to Mrs. Ingram, maybe both. So, uh, yeah, no, he's, he's being drafted too early. Yeah. You can get David Johnson where he is and get 
a clear number one back that catches passes. Because remember, I'm not – Mark Ingram has, did, didn't catch much passes last year. He was mostly a running – he was mostly a running running back. But last year they ran a running back by committee too. Just not as bad as – just not as big as I think they're going to do this year. So there we go. Those are our four guys that we say you should stay, stay away from. Michael and I are going to be back uh, with more preseason, specifically draft content, so you do not want to miss it. I also just want to take a moment to thank all the fans. You guys are amazing, and uh, thank you so much for all the support lately. You guys are great. All right. We will see you guys next time. See ya.